Hey guys, I just want to show you a couple of things. So I have two heads here. This one's off a of, uh, four-cylinder Mitsubishi. This is a J-Series Honda V6 head. So right here on the J-Series V6, right at this point, you have a wear indicator. So these heads can be cut down. If you, let's, let's say you overheat the engine, the, the head gets warped. You can actually mill this out, take it to a machine shop. They'll mill this out. They'll change out the valves, the springs, valve stems. You should do at the same time. But right here, there's a little wear indicator. And hopefully you guys can see that, try to get focused on it. So <clears throat> you should not go below this point. So, so the dot in the middle is the lowest you should go. So if you have a little bit of height right here on the outer surface, you get like once you get in there, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this little dot, should you should not have the lower surface or the outer surface, I should say, go past or go lower than the, the inner dot. So that's a wear indicator. Do not surpass that, all right? Another thing you need to look for, so I'm gonna show you on this head, is, uh, so this had a couple of stuck uh, spark plugs in it. Three spark plugs were stuck. Actually, all four of them were stuck. So you can see, where's the fourth one? Fourth one is right there, right? So the fourth spark plug got stuck inside the head and it snapped off. You can see that little, uh, is that the ground? That's the ground right there, right? So what it should look like is that. But it snapped off inside the head. So somebody either cross-threaded these spark plugs or they failed to use uh, anti-seize. And I know I'm going to get hate comments for this, but if you have an aluminum head and you have aluminum spark plugs, use anti-seize. If you have a steel head and you have aluminum spark plugs, Use anti-seize. If you have a steel head and steel spark plugs, use anti-seize. The point being is whenever you install spark plugs, use anti-seize. I don't care what anybody says. I really don't. Guys are always like, oh, you, you're putting on anti-seize on spark plugs that shouldn't have any. Shut up, dude. Obviously, you haven't done enough heads or spark plugs to know that these things can get stuck in there. So always use, always use anti-seize. All right, or you're gonna end up like this and you're gonna have to take the head off. All right, so another thing I wanna show you on this. So check it out, we gotta get nice and close on this. But uh, we were actually gonna to try to revive this head, but it wasn't gonna work. So let me show you why. This head is shot, so for a couple of reasons. Um, let me see the worst offender right here. Okay, right here. On this cylinder right here, you can see all the wear marks. See where it's eaten away? The metal is gone. You're not saving that. There's no coming back from that. This is a fire ring and uh, it's worn down and dissolved. It's not good. You can see on the Honda J Series V6, the edge around the head is nice and uniform, right? It's intact, looking good. There's nothing wrong. Go back to this Mitsubishi head. You can see it's just eaten away, eaten away right there. Gone, 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 broken, broken, gone, gone. Jesus. Wait, 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 oh. Huh. Looks like you stepped on a fire urchin. Stepped on me, stepped on me? Are you kidding? This guy was dancing on me. I mean, just look at this. Broken, broken, gone, gone, broken, broken, broken. Okay, you don't want that. That is not good, you can't fix that. Another place where these heads crack is right between the two valves, the intake and exhaust valves. If this is cracked right here, the, the head is shot. The head is useless. You can't do anything with it. You have to throw it away and find a new one, buy a new one, find a remanufactured one, but it's shot. Another thing right here, you're going to see. See this pitting? This pitting on the head is not a good sign. You don't want to see this either. This is an indication that, mm, I don't know, it could be an indication of a lot of things. could have been an indication that they had the wrong spark plugs in here getting too hot. There was a, uh, cap no, nah, I don't want to say cavitation problem, but... Maybe a maybe a leaking head gasket, blown head gasket. But it kind of looks, see how it's worn away and gone? Kind of looks like this right here, right? Where it's gone and just not good. So it should look like this. Should look nice and clean. Surface should be free of defects. The area around the pistons should be free of defects. There shouldn't be any missing metal. 
All right. So if you get in here and you have a head, that's where the spark plugs sit, right? One down there, one there, one down there, one down there, and that's where the one broke off. If you guys need to get um, spark plugs out and, you, and they feel like they're stuck in there into a head, your best bet is to take your time, be careful, but get a penetrating oil. Uh, the best penetrating oil I've found is 50-50 acetone and ATF, automatic transmission fluid. Next best thing is liquid wrench penetrating oil. So what you do, you just spray that down in there. Spray it on in there, dude. Don't, you know, spray generous amount in there. Let it sit for days if you need be. If it's cold, let it sit longer. Let it sit for a week if you have to. Because it's better to let the penetrating oil sit and do its job than actually have to yank a head off and deal with all the problems from that, right? So if you need to let the, the spark plugs sit in penetrating oil, let them sit. Let the penetrating oil do its job. Don't try to force it out. Or you're going to end up like that, where it's stuck inside the head. Just like that. It's going to look like that, and you're going to be S-O-L. All right, so let the penetrating oil do its job. Another thing to take care of or to consider when doing a head, see all this old head gasket material? You could take your time and get a like a scraper, scrape all that off, but why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that, dude? Work smarter, not harder, dude. So what I found really works well, and I'll put some links in the description below, so before Sears closed down, I was able to pick this up at my local Sears. I'm so sad that that place is closed down. I love that place. I got my clothes, my shoes, my boots, my tools from Sears. But this is a, I don't want to say, it's not a Nomex. I'll put some links in the description below. But it's basically a plastic um, wire brush, plastic brush, plastic wire brush that's impregnated with copper. And what you do is you hook it up to a drill then you're able to go in here, low speed, and get all this old head gasket material off. If this head was savable, but it's not. But I just want to show you guys a tip, tips and tricks of what you could do to get this uh, old head gasket material off. Obviously, you're going to have to replace the head gasket, but you can get this cleaned up relatively quick with this kind of uh, attachment onto your drill, be that corded or um, electric. So... Those are just some quick tips I want to show you guys. If you guys are dealing with heads, um, just take your time. These things are uh, pretty robust. And uh, just wanted to give you some tips and tricks of what I've learned over the years. So obviously this head looks a lot better than this one. This is off a 2007 Acura TL. It actually overheated, so this needs to be milled down a little bit. Getting back to straightness. I, I should do a video for you guys where I show you how to see if it's if it's flat. You take a straight edge, you go boom, 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 and um, oh, I should do that. I'll, I'll do that in the next video. Take your time, use a quality head gasket, and like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.